Hello YouTube! I'm the Jaunting Ape and in today's video I'll share with you five items not to forget on your next adventure. Some of them are things that you don't want to forget because you find yourself in trouble without them. The others are more geared towards squeezing out every last juicy drop you can from your vacation time. So without further ado, let's dive right in and start with number one. Oofta. Number one is a snorkel and mask. <coughs> These tools are first class tickets to an underwater exploration world and they open up a whole new point of view of the area you're exploring. There's a few reasons why I think these little buggers deserve some real estate in my bags. More often than not, the best travel experiences are the ones you didn't plan for. Having your snorkel gear with you means that you can seize these unexpected opportunities and make the most of your vacation. Another reason is a cost effective adventure. Just about anywhere you visit, you're gonna have the opportunity to get your adventure bone wet and dive in with the fishes. And while most boat tours offer free snorkeling gear with the tour, often hotels and resorts, they're gonna charge you something extra for the day if you're gonna use them just to swim off the beach. And if you've ever looked on these boats, they keep all the snorkeling gear together in a big bag or a tote and they're all mixed and matched and it's not really the most sanitary thing that I've ever seen. So by bringing your own snorkel gear, not only can you save money on your trip, but you can also ensure that the equipment fits you comfortably, making for a far greater experience. Flexibility and independence with your snorkel is also a great thing to have. You're not stuck to tours where they're gonna move you along at a certain rate and you have to follow the leader. No, you can do whatever you want. And if you find a good spot right off the coast of where you're staying, you can spend all day there if you'd like. Health and hygiene is huge. If you've ever experienced that community snorkel bag I was talking about earlier, bringing your own set would make a lot of sense at this time. The last thing you want is to get somebody's germs or have somebody else's snorkel in your mouth and get sick and be down for a few days on your vacation. Now snorkeling enables you to get up and personal with all kinds of aquatic marine life from colorful reefs to clownfish and maybe even a baby shark. These encounters create lasting memories and offer fantastic photo opportunities to cherish long after your trip ends. So a snorkel and mask aren't just travel accessories. They're your ticket to immersive underwater adventures, cost savings, and memories that last a lifetime. As a solo traveler, one of my greatest companions is my getaway sticks. I use them a lot for getting up to volcanoes or to the temple or whatever. A lot of the stuff that I want to see is travel by foot only, so I got to make sure that my feet are comfortable and safe. Now there are three styles of shoes that I recommend you bring along, depending on what kind of vacation you're going on. But for me, one of the most important is a lightweight, comfortable pair of good hiking shoes. Travel often involves long hours of waiting in line or walking. All the best things are often at the end of a glorious hike. Ill-fitting or uncomfortable shoes can lead to blisters, sore feet, and even more serious issues like swelling and that kind of thing. Now, on my last trip, I was in Costa Rica and I was walking to go see the Arena Volcano. It's a few mile hike. And we were about three quarters of the way there where the trail just started to get rough, not so nice. And there was this poor girl and, and her boyfriend and they were just sitting, she was sitting on the side of the trail and she had obviously something wrong with her feet. She needed attention. What she was wearing for shoes was something that I would be embarrassed to wear into the shower. My point is nobody should ever have to miss that awe-inspiring sunset view or a volcano or a temple because they've chose to wear their favorite flip-flops instead of a decent pair of hikers. And with the hikers, as for ease of packing, they're a little bulkier, a little heavier. I choose to wear them when I'm on the airplane and keep my bag freed up a little bit and a little lighter. Now, the next kind of style of shoe I like to bring is uh, the brand I use is Sanooks. They're kind of like a loafer, comfortable, sand walking shoe. And they're great for bombing around markets or just walking around town or inner city walking around the resort. Basically anywhere that you won't have to outrun a baboon down a jungle covered mountainside. Now other than these being very comfortable shoes, the other reason I like to bring them is because they do pass as a formal shoe. And there are certain instances when you're traveling where you need something like that. They slip on and off easy. Many temples you visit, you gotta take your shoes off. If you've ever experienced a five-star resort and you want to join in on one of the a la carte, you're probably going to have to wear something nice. My Sanooks have always gotten me into these places, whereas when I try to get in with my sandals, they just send me off on some kind of a side quest. Nope, no sir, not today, not you. And one of my favorite shoes is my life-saving, I don't know what you call them, super pool water slip grip things. Now I've been, <laughs> many times I've been slipping and sliding and falling over and embarrassing getting all bumped up and bruised up. So I finally found a good pair of these water walkers and they're also good on the beach so you don't step on any 
broken glass or jellyfish. Um, they're very light, easy to fit in your bag. And it's for this reason I bring a pair of these super duper grippers so I can jot with confidence even on the most slipperiest of areas, even after the most spiciest of runs. <laughs> I often bring a fourth style of shoe as well and it's kind of a cure-all. If you don't know what to wear, they kind of cover everything but not everything super well. And I believe Keen is the company that started making the shoes. So when you're packing for your next trip, just keep it in mind that a good pair of shoes could make a big difference between a memorable trip and a painful one. So, And please don't be that person that's sitting three quarters of the way up that trail to that epic viewpoint because you've decided that you're going to wear your favorite shower shoes instead of a good pair of hikers. Now that we've taken a step in the right direction and we've talked about the footwear you should bring traveling, let's switch gears and shed some light on another essential aspect of your trip. Yes, I'm talking about flashlights and the vital role they play in illuminating your pathway to your next adventure. Now, if you're anything like me, when the sun goes down, that just opens up a whole nother world into some really cool stuff that you can find outside in the dark. Anytime I find myself in an area that's offering any kind of a night safari, I always take advantage of it. And if there's no tours offered, you're often going to find me just roaming around out in the woods with, with my flashlight, seeing what I can find. And there's always some really cool stuff to see. The fact is some of the coolest critters are nocturnal and you're never gonna see them during the day. So you have to get out at night and have yourself one of these to find them. So whether you're in a dimly lit hostel room, trying to navigate unfamiliar roads in the dead of night, or just trying to read a map without trying to disturb your fellow campers, this is where flashlights and headlamps really shine. And nowadays they make some pretty cool stuff. This is a Streamlight ProTac. It's rechargeable, lightweight, weatherproof, and it'll fit nicely in your pocket or you can strap it to your shirt or whatever. I always have one of these in my bags. And for a headlamp, I use this brand called Petzl. Now this is the second one I've bought. I just got it. Um, my first one I've had for about 12 years and it still works. The only problem with it is the input where the charger goes in is a, is a little bit sloppy. So I bought this new one. And with these new ones, you can actually take them apart and replace the battery and the charger, or you can use AAA batteries instead of the rechargeable battery. It's pretty handy. Now, regardless of what kind of headlamp or flashlight you're gonna buy, I think something that everybody needs to really consider is getting a flashlight with a red light on it. I can't stress enough how important it is to have a red light. And people just seem to not know anything about why a red light is good to have. Now the biggest reason for me in the red lights is bugs. Have you ever watched a moth fly into a light over and over and over again hundreds of times? Bugs are obsessed with light and I hate that. And while red lights aren't a repellent as bug spray would be, it doesn't actually scare the bugs away. It's just something that the, the bugs don't seem to care too much about. Bugs really don't like red light. I'm not sure why. I googled it once and it said something about ultra long wavelengths and bugs don't like long wavelengths. And you know who doesn't hate long wavelengths? Other travelers. If you've ever been in a hostel room and you had people coming and going early or late at night and they're beaming a bright white light on you, that sucks. It is much more accommodating to come in with a red light. It's less invasive and it's just a lot nicer for the people that are trying to get some rest. It's a courteous gesture that promotes a harmonious travel experience for everybody. And while you're being courteous, you might as well be courteous to yourself as well. When you use a white light in the dark, as soon as you turn on your white light, you're, you lose your night vision. And if for some reason you have to shut it off because you got giant helicopter bugs flying at you or you run out of battery or whatever, you're gonna be blind in the dark. Now, if you were using a red light the whole time, when you shut the red light off, your, your night vision stays completely intact. Number four on my list is cash and credit cards. Two things you definitely don't wanna forget. The age old debate, which is better? It is essential to carry both to ensure financial flexibility along your journey. So let's begin with cash, the timeless form of currency that transcends borders and cultures. One nice thing about cash is that it's universally accepted. Who's not gonna take your cash, right? It's great in unforeseen emergency situations as well, such as card malfunction, unexpected expenses, or just traveling in places with limited bank access. Having cash on hand kind of provides a financial safety net. It's also good for bargaining power. In many places you travel in the world, bargaining is the norm. Cash gives you the upper hand in negotiating prices, allowing you to secure better deals with souvenirs, tours, and delicious meals. I find bargaining to be one of the most exciting things when I go traveling. I love to get into a market and bargain with people. I have even thrown curveballs at store owners where they bargain, they want $20, and I tell them, no, 25 and you go up. You want to talk language barrier, you get quite the look from them when you do that. But they're always good to take the money. Another great reason to have cash on you is an easy out. Though it is rare, the fact is that sometimes travelers get mugged when they're in unfamiliar places. 99 times out of 100, the bandits will slip into the night if you just throw them some cash. Now I have heard stories from reliable sources where people get mugged and they don't have any cash on them. 
And in this situation, they walk to an ATM and the bandits make them pull out all the money that they can and max out each of their cards. And I think that you're gonna lose a lot more money that way than you would by slipping them $100 or whatever you had in your wallet. Now there is another convenience to using credit cards. Credit cards offer security features like fraud prevention, which can be a lifesaver if your card is lost or stolen. Unlike cash, a lost or stolen credit card can be replaced rather swiftly. It's also nice to have electronic records. Credit card transactions leave a digital trail, simplifying expense management and budgeting and record keeping for reimbursement. One of the best features of using a credit card when traveling is it allows you to book hotels and stuff online in advance. Hotels.com, Expedia, these places you you can just go on your app and have a credit card on there and you just pick your place to stay and away you go. Credit cards offer a fast and easy way of locking in a booking down the road somewhere. And this would be an advantage to you if you're not like me and you choose to book your hotels in advance. I'm more of the wandering type and I just tend to show up and that stung me before. So now I do actually look online and I just make sure that there's something available. But I still like walking in because you can go back to that cash bargaining power that you can't do when you book something online. Now typically when I travel I carry two credit cards with me as well as a debit card. When you're trying to pull out cash from an ATM it doesn't always work with your one card. I've had it lots of times where one doesn't work, two doesn't work and finally my third one works. The one thing I don't like about debit cards is there's no real security on it like there is with the fraud protection with a, with a credit card. So with all that in mind you want to balance the perfect duo of credit card and cash. Having both forms of payment ensures you'll be prepared for any situation. So cash for day to day expenses, local markets and those off the beaten path experiences. And credit cards for larger purchases, emergency situations and those online bookings in advance. And with that said, let's move on to number five. Number five is something that is often overlooked but is a very important aspect of traveling. The importance of travel insurance. Travel, as we all know, is a journey to the unknown. It comes with its fair share of uncertainties. Travel insurance steps in as your safety net, providing peace of mind in the face of the unexpected. People tend to take more risks when they're traveling than when they're at home in their comfort zone. They also tend to consume more alcohol, and I'll leave it up to you to decide whether the two are related or not. If you've ever been to Southeast Asia, I'm sure you've seen the amount of backpackers that have their elbows and knees all scraped up and bandaged up. In fact, there was one pub that I would frequent in Southern Thailand where I could just sit there all afternoon and I'd watch the tourists get on their scooters after a day at the beach and watch them pile their bikes up one by one with some pretty good entertainment while I sat back and enjoyed a tall frosty one. One of the most compelling reasons to get travel insurance is medical coverage. Illnesses and accidents can happen anywhere, anytime and it can happen to you. Being in a foreign country can make it a lot harder to deal with these kind of things. Travel insurance ensures that you have access to medical coverage, including hospitalization and emergency medical evacuation. Now I've been traveling for 15 years and it wasn't until June 2022 that I actually needed to use my travel insurance. And it was for something that was completely out of my hands. I was down in Freeport, Texas and I was doing some surf fishing, which is fishing off of a beach. And they use this oversized four propeller drone to fly out bait about three or 400 meters out into the ocean. The drone flies it out and drops it and then you wait till the fish bite. Now at one point in the fishing trip I walked over to the vehicle we were using and I was applying sunscreen to my oh so precious head and the guide was trying to do a vertical takeoff with the drone. A gust of wind had blown the hook underneath of the vehicle. As the drone tried for upward the line tightened swinging the drone all the way around the Jeep and causing it to crash down hard. Thankfully right into the back of my head. This was a pretty quick jaunt to the hospital. It was about a 45 minute ride down the beach and I was on the phone with my insurance company telling them which hospital I was going to. And when I finally showed up to the hospital, they pretty much had the red carpet rolled out with the staple gun ready. After 11 staples into my head, I was right as rain and all set to stand up next to my best friend at his wedding three days later. Now over the next six months, I received several bills in the mail and they added up to about $4,000 US, which is quite a bit of money. The insurance paid for everything and I didn't have to front even a single cent. My point point is life is unpredictable and plans sometimes change. Travel insurance can reimburse you for some of these small mishaps, ensuring that you don't take the full brunt on yourself. In the end, the value of travel insurance extends far beyond the monetary benefits. It provides peace of mind, allowing you to embrace your adventure with confidence. So there are five ticket items I encourage everyone to bring with them to ensure a seamless and enjoyable journey and ensure that you're well prepared for any adventure that might come your way. Thank you for tuning into today's video and I hope my list serves you as a valuable guide to your upcoming journeys, ensuring you're equipped to embrace this world with confidence, convenience, and peace of mind. Now, if you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe, comment down below. Safe travels and may your adventures be filled with unforgettable moments. The world is yours.